Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say I love you, Lord. I, love you, Lord. I am grateful. That my, life that my life is in your word, is in your word. And, your word and your word is my life, my life. shout hallelujah. hallelujah and so shall it be Amen. all the days of your life Amen. the word of God will program your life to awesome greatness Amen. in Jesus precious name Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please take your seats. Welcome to this midweek service. Amen. Amen. And <clears throat> as you all know, the year is gradually coming to an end. It was just January not long ago now now we are almost at the end of the year but thank god that you are among those seeing the ending of the year thank god praise the lord there there were a lot of people that made plans for the end of this year before the year we end there are no more there are people that planned for the end of the year they made plans but the year is ending but they are no longer there for their plan so thank God that you are here and it is by the grace it is by the mercies of God. It is by the grace. It is by the mercies of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, next Sunday, not this. Sorry, this one is Super Sunday, right? Yes, sir. And next Sunday is our Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yes, sir. 8th of December. Between this Sunday, 1st of December, and the 8th of December, very easily, 2025 can be programmed. Amen? Amen. Between the 1st of December and the 8th of December, you can program your 2025. Because in between it, we have three days. Three days of praying and fasting. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, next week, praise the Lord. We will have praying and fasting. And it is important that you take advantage of it. It is important that you are part of it very often when we talk about praying and fasting people think about their needs and what they want and what they don't want but there is more to praying and fasting than to the wants of your life you need money, you need a car, you need a house, you need a land, you need clothes, you need this, you need that. And so, and so, in praying and fasting, instead of you to put it to good use, you don't put it to good use. But I'm trusting God that by preparing you today, and perhaps also Sunday, you can be better equipped to maximize these three days of praying and fasting. You can turn around your life within the next one week. And I said to you, between the 1st of December and the 8th of December, 2025, you can pocket it already. How? 
by faith, we understand that 2025 is framed by the word of God. Is that not what uh, Hebrews 11, 3 said to us? We understand that destinies can be framed by the word of God. Years can be framed by the word of God. Have you asked yourself, why is it that business can plan 10 years in advance and they don't pray? Do you understand what I'm saying? Dangote businesses, they didn't plan the refinery in one year. It was a 10 year plan. You only saw it on the ninth year and on the tenth year. But for the rest of the eight years, it was going through framing, production, framing, and production. And in those years, they looked like stupid people. But in the ninth year, when the refinery began to take shape, and in the tenth year, when production began to commence, then everybody understood that Dangote had refinery. Is that not true? But the refinery didn't start three years ago. It didn't start five years ago. How is it that businesses plan when Tinibu was the governor of Lagos State, he planned Lagos State for the next 25 years while he was a governor. Tinibu, the present, the present president of Nigeria. When he was governor of Lagos State, he planned, he's a Muslim, he planned what will happen in Lagos for the next 25 years after him. And that is what is still going on. Praise the Lord. That is still what is going on. And I think it will end by the time of San Wolu. That 25 years will end. When San Wolu ends. And throughout that 25 years, he had determined who will be the governor of Lagos State. And if you go contrary to his plan, he will remove you. One man. One man in the biggest city in Nigeria or even in West Africa, if not in Africa. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You can look at 2025. 20, you can plan. You can decide on how it will be with you. The Bible says something to us in Genesis chapter 32. Genesis you have your Bible, please turn to Genesis chapter 32. I want us to read from verse 1 for you to get a background of what I want you to get before we get to verse 9. So Jacob went on his way and the angels are you following? Yes, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Mytanian. Verse 3. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to exile his brother in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Verse 4, and he commanded them, saying, Speak, speak thus to my Lord Esau. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Speak thus to my Lord Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. Verse 5, everybody. Does that sound like a poor man? Read it again. So you can see that Jacob was already a rich man. Isn't it? He is saying, I have. He didn't say I'm believing God. He didn't say I'm praying, isn't it? He said, I have cattle and donkeys, sheep, goats, male and female servants, 
male and female servants, beyond animals, I have servants. The size of a man is determined very often by the size of his servant. Praise the Lord. The size of a man is very often determined by the number of those that attend to him. He said, now, I am sending this message to my Lord that I might find favor in your eyes. Who is Esau? His brother. His brother. How did he become his Lord? How did Esau become his Lord? Were they not twins? They were twins. They were twins. Hello, answer me. They were twins. How did Esau become his Lord? You that are saying that you only senior me with six months. Amen. You are saying you only senior me with less than a year. How did Esau become his Lord? How did he become the servant? He said, you are servant. Listen to me. Your problem is not what you think. Your problem is not what you assume. And if you will open your spirit in the next one week, your life will turn around. Jacob had an encounter. And on his way back home, that encounter changed him. He had an encounter with a man called Leban, his uncle. He went through many pain. He went through many afflictions. He went through so many things. But it changed him. It changed him. And so he began to see life differently. He began to appreciate the things of God differently. And so coming back home, he began to respect what he does not respect. He began to value what he does not value. Praise the Lord. In verse 9. Then Jacob prayed. Then Jacob prayed. I want you to underline that word. Jacob prayed. Because you will do the same in the coming days. O oh God of my father Abraham. God of my father Isaac. Lord you who said to me you who said to me go back to your country and your relatives and I will make you prosper verse 10 I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan but now but now but now I have become I have become I have become, praise the Lord, two camps. Then his prayer. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau. Save me. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau. He was rich in cattle. He was rich in everything. But there was a fear that existed in him. There was a problem that existed in him that was capable of destroying him. And so it is in our lives in many ways. There is something that we fear. There is something that we have not dealt with. There is something that is paralyzing. Jacob prayed, save me from the hand of my brother Esau. I wish somebody would pray, save me from my limitations. I wish somebody would pray, save me from my character. Save me from my mouth. I too talk. Save me from my arrogance. It was a prayer that transformed Jacob in all his life. You come to a point, you said enough is enough. The enemy is not outside, the enemy is on the inside. 
Jacob had conquered Laban, made a lot of money, built up a lot of wealth, had everything, but there was something that Jacob could not deal with by himself. And now, he was about to face his greatest fear. The Bible said that when Esau came to meet him, Esau was coming with 400 men. That's more than an army. Are you hearing me? Esau had the ability and the capacity to destroy him and all that he had. But Jacob knew, Jacob knew that if God is not with him, Esau will finish him. In the same way, in the same way, this thing has robbed you of many things in your life. This thing in you, in you, it has robbed you. It may be your anger, it has robbed you. It may be your pride, it has robbed you. You have everything, but you know so many things, but and you've been told very often, change the way change the way you say this is the way you are you took ownership of it you took ownership of what brings shame and reproach to you he said take me this is the way i talk you want to get married so many people want to marry you because but they are afraid of your mouth and you are praying lord give me a husband god said me all that i have given to you none of them will come to you because of your mouth a prayer that will change your destiny that we program 2025 it is possible that next week you can transform 2025 it is possible save me i pray from the hand of things that destroys me save me from the hand of things that limit me it was a prayer he said for i am afraid that Esau will come and attack me and also the mothers with their children but you have said to me Lord I will surely make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea which cannot be counted I am asking you Jacob understood the word of God but Jacob understood the enemy too we understand the word of God we quote the word of God but we lack understanding of the limiters of the strongholds in our life and so year after year no progress year after year no progress you are faithful in church you are faithful in church but you are not faithful in God do you understand you can make up your mind concerning the way next week will be in your life you can say it by, by next week I'm going to finish well in 2024. And that we enter into 2025 in a different way. And I have said to you, New Year brings nothing new in your life. Is it not the same day? Is it not the same time? Is it not the same weather? What is new about New Year? The sad thing is that you make New Year to be old year. Because how you come in is how you will be. Praise the Lord. You make new year to be like the old year because you are coming as you were in 2024. And then if you do the same thing in the same way and expect a different result, it is called madness. And Jacob is to enter into a new year, but he didn't want to enter as he left. He had the word of God, but but the word of God was not enough. He too had problem. He had a problem even though God has spoken. Yes, God said it and I believe it. That settles it. Why is it not working with Jacob? Why is it not working with you? You know why? Because you have accommodated the enemy within. Somebody said to you, Fix this in your life. You say, leave me. That's the way I am. 
Somebody tried to correct you. You took ownership. Not only did you take ownership, you gave the problem room and power to occupy in your life. You make enemies like the Galatians. Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You make enemies of those that tell you the truth. You chose those that flatter you. Praise the Lord. A man, of course it was in a movie, Somebody told him, ah, you look so handsome. He said, come, tell me the truth. Tell me what you want. I have a mirror. Don't lie to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, don't lie to me. I know I'm not handsome. What do you want from me? He said, okay, can you lend me 10 bucks? He said, now you are talking. Praise the Lord. But there are people that like to believe a lie. They enjoy a lie. Amen? Amen. And so you live in a lie. And so those that tell you truth, you classify them as your enemies. Praise the Lord. King Ahab said, I don't like Elisha. He said, He is always prophesying doom. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He always prophesied doom. Somebody said, Pastor is always talking about him. And I've never had time to sit with you. But the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you to change. Praise the Lord. I don't know you. I don't sit with you. We've never had a meeting. I've never talked. But you said, every time I preach, I'm talking to you. How now? Isn't God trying to help you? Of course God is trying to help you. The Bible said, in verse 13, Jacob spent the night there and from what he had with him he selected a gift for his brother Esau he spent the night there praise the Lord he spent the night there and he chose a gift for his brother Esau next week can you have lonely night so that you have good company in 2025? In verse 24, the Bible says, So Jacob was left alone. He was left alone. He was left alone. He was left alone. That's what praying and fasting is all about, being left alone. Being left alone with God. He prayed, Lord, save me from the enemy that is coming towards me. Not only did he pray, he prepared a gift. Is it not, is it not in the same way? Next week is our praying and fasting. And then Sunday is our thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is when you recognize and acknowledge God for 2024. Even before you step into 2025. You know, every ministry should end up 2024 with a service of thanksgiving. What are you doing in thanksgiving service? He said, Lord, from January to today, you are the reason why I didn't go six feet under. And therefore, you are the only one that can make me see the end of next year. And then, even before it of December Sunday you have prepared you have made up your mind on what you will use to thank God you, you put together a special gift a special offering something that tells God that indeed you are truly grateful it's not enough to sing praises it's not enough to pray it's not enough to praise it's not enough to fast. The value of a man's God is measured by the value he dropped on his altar. Make no mistake. Who your God is to you is measured. Many of you, before you got born again, you had a girlfriend. True or false? Come on, don't be like uh, Holy Mary. Praise the Lord. On 
some special time, she will be expecting special gifts. And what you give, she will read your love from what you are giving. True or false? Ladies, am I saying the truth? Yes, sir. From what you receive, it is an indication of the love of that person in your life. Amen. Amen. There is no doubt about it. The person can write, you are my Queen Sheba. You are the cockroach in my room. You are the mosquito that bites me every day. You are the milk in my sugar. You are the sugar in my milk. He can write all those things. And at the end of the day, he said, your mother will say, what did he send to you? He said, mama, and that's also a prophecy. He said, I told you that boy is no good. He is not good for you. Is he not spiritual? He is spiritual. What is missing? What is missing? And I tell the youth also in the church, you want to propose, propose to somebody in a whole year, not a gift. Not a gift. Her birthday, you pretended you were in the spirit. Christmas, you pretended you were out of town. New Year, you say your mother sent for you. Easter, you say that your father want to see you. And you went and proposed. And you said you were rejected. You were even good that you were rejected. You should be dejected. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A man's gift makes way for him and brings him before great men. This is the principle we're reading from the Bible. He spent the night there and from what he had with him, he selected gift for his brother Esau. Next week is important. Next week is awesome. Prayerful preparation prevents poor performance. If you don't want to perform poorly in 2025, next week, how you prepare will determine how you will perform. For by faith, we understand that 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, they are framed by the word of God. Every year needs a framing. Every framing requires a substance. Every substance backed by the word. Whatever the word backs up, we never fail. Jacob was left alone. Jacob was left alone. Tried to be alone. In the time of our praying, I try to be alone. When we come here to pray together, the timetable will come out on Sunday by the grace of God. You, this place is big enough. You will have time to be on yourself and pray. If somebody will lead, good. But when we get here, Jacob was left alone. Jacob was all night alone. He was left alone. You take your prayer. You take the word of God. You, in a corner, you bow yourself. You begin to call upon the name of the Lord. It is next year that we are talking about. But then, it takes the ending to determine the beginning. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him all till daybreak. Praise the Lord. And a man wrestled with him till what? Daybreak. Will you wrestle with God till daybreak? How do you wrestle with God? With the word. Lord, I am not living until you bless me. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Verse 26. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. Let me go, for it is daybreak. Jacob replied, What did Jacob say? 
What did Jacob say? What did Jacob say? Who will say, I will not stop praying until you bless me? Until you bless me, this fasting will not be over. Why does Jacob want blessing? Jacob just said, I have cattle, oxen, sheep, great flock. What kind of blessing is Jacob talking about? He was already rich. We know that Jacob left Laban with a lot of flock, isn't it? He was rich. He was a prosperous man. But Jacob is saying something that I want you to think about. There was something that all the prosperity of Laban could not do in his life. To deal with the swindler that is Jacob. To deal with the 419 that is Jacob. To deal with the arrogance that is Jacob. He couldn't get that solved with Laban. Laban couldn't help him. You can make all the money, but inside you are dying gradually. You can get all the connections, but inside you are dying. You know why? What is on the inside require what is from above. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Jacob wasn't talking about money. Jacob was not talking about needs. He was talking about something personal, something on the inside. What will you do next week? How will you pray next week? What will be your focus? What will you say to God? Lord, this, this year, I've been nothing but a beggar. Lord, next year, let others beg me. Now, are you hearing me? Jacob said, I left with a walking stick from this place. I left with a staff. A walking stick. But now, I am coming back with two companions, with two camps, with two companies, Jacob said. And he was rich. 2024. 2024. 2024, you struggle to give. You struggle to pay tight. You struggle to serve God. You struggle in many ways. And you say, Lord, 2025. Ha. No, 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 no. No way. Do not be like that in 2025. Praise the Lord. The Bible said God is not mocked. When Deaconess was taking devotional, she said, right? Seed, harvest, in between time. Seed. Harvest. One is the beginning, one is the end. But in between, there is something that you don't value. It's time. And Jacob was left alone. And that was the best time in Jacob's life. At the moment he was left alone, that was the best time. You always want people. Always want people. You've never been alone. The time I was alone from my family was the best years of my life. It was difficult, but it was what shaped me. It was difficult time. It was painful time. But it was a learning time. You understood the value of family. Value of money. Value of time. Praise the Lord. What will you be in 2025? Determines what you will do in 2024. I'm telling you the truth. I will not let you go unless you bless me. Will somebody be able to insist and say, Lord, I am not letting you go until you put an end to the reproach in my life. Put an end, an end to the shame of my life. Praise the Lord. Why are you in church? You are in church to be changed. You are in church to be transformed. You are in church to grow. Never be in church to be the same. The Bible says we should grow. We are designed to grow. We are designed to increase. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? You are by design built to grow. And some people say, I don't have anything because I'm a widow. Who told you that? Who told you that? Why don't you thank God that you are even a widow? There are people that have never had a husband. They've never had a husband. And you, all your excuse in life is because you are a widow. But the Bible said that Anna was a widow. And yet she was a prophetess. 84 years she was still praising God. She was dwelling in the house of God. Why are you a widow that beg? No. Before you became a widow, were you not single? When you were single, where were you called? No, what was your name? When you didn't have a husband, were you called a widow? No, what were you called? Hello? What were you called? What? Spinster. Why do you choose the word widow? Why don't you choose spinster again? No, why don't you? Why don't you? The Bible says Anna was a widow, but she was not a beggar. Anna was a widow, but she was not a victim. The Bible says she only lived with her husband for seven years. You, you lived your husband with your husband for 25, 30 years, had children, everything before he passed on. What do you do? Lord, thank you. Ha! Lord, thank you. The children, Lord, you gave them to me. You took my husband. Lord, you will supply my provisions for them. Lord, what must I do from this time now? No, you didn't do that. You didn't, you never prayed like that. What was your prayer? Nobody is taking care of me. Nobody is looking after me. Nobody is doing that. Nobody is doing that. And so you paralyze yourself in what God didn't plan for your life. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me? When you didn't have a husband, you were a spinster. Your husband, you enjoyed very much. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And he went on. And now you have children. How about praising God? How about thanking God? No, how about? May next week change your life. Amen. Do you know that God does not like beggars? Do you understand what I'm saying? God does not like beggars. Because beggars are always angry. They always count who didn't give them, who didn't do for them. Have you thought about it? You can be a giver. You may be a widow, but you have time. You can give your time to serve God. You can give your time to support the work of God. You can give your time to evangelism. And so, out of weakness, you become strong. I met a woman in Canada. The daughter went to a party and the daughter was killed in a fight. The night she went to a club, the daughter was killed. The daughter was killed. And when she heard the news, she wept and she wept and she wept. And then after she finished crying, she said, Devil, you have taken my daughter from me. But I'm going to take 100 souls from your hand. She said, you took my daughter, but I will take 100 souls from your hand. She wrote a book called, Don't Die in Winter. Don't die in the time of affliction. And she will go all out winning souls. She said, devil, you took my daughter, but I'm taking 100 from you. And God blessed her. When we met her, she, 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 she had a house in Toronto. She had been trying to sell that house. So she, we met in church. She invited us to come and spend some time in her house. Mommy and I went to her house. And she said to me, she said, Brother Fa, I've been trying to sell this house because this is something that ties me and my husband. I want to share it. We want to share the money, but we have not been able to sell it. For months, we have not been able to sell it. I said, what? She said, yes. She said, yes. I said to her, 
Do you want me to pray? He said, please, if you can pray. I took the anointing, the anointing oil, came out of the house. I said, this house, big house, this house. Ah, <laughs> shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I lifted up my voice to heaven. And I made a decree over that house. And I anointed that house. Because the anointing is irrespective of persons. Made a decree. Anointed the house. I commanded the dark cloud over that house to be lifted. They have even reduced the price. Reduced the price to find a buyer. No buyer. Why? A black cloud. A black cloud. A black cloud. I commanded it to be lifted and I placed an anointing upon it. We left. One month later, she called us and said the house has been sold. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The anointing work. If you will let it work. What will you do next week? Complain? Mama? Or say like Jacob, Lord, I will let you go until you change my position. I am tired of face me and face you. Must I be in face me and face you? I am tired of it. My time of lifting has come. Praise the Lord. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you stayed in God's presence. All night, all day, as much as you can. It's only three days, but it can determine a whole year. Jacob said, I will let you go until you bless me. What will you say next week? What will you say next week? Lord, you will surely bless me. Lord, you will change my destiny. Lord, you will change my circumstances. Lord, you will change my situation. Lord, you will make that change. Praise the Lord. You will make that change. You will insist. Jacob said to the Lord, your word says, your word says, you have the word of God. He says in 23, 25 Exodus, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. He will take away sickness and disease from you. That's the word of God. You have it. In Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what will happen? You will become a poor person. He said, and all these things, all these things shall be added unto you. What are you doing? No, what are you doing? Not only have you made yourself poor, you made your children poor. You made your children poor. You destroyed their destiny. You couldn't even hide, hide it from your children. You hide it. He said, my children will not end up like me. Get angry in your spirit. Praise the Lord. God does not like beggars. And he didn't make any of his children to be a beggar. And stop talking like a beggar. Stop talking like a victim. I remember when they wanted to mock me with food. Just because at the moment things was not going well with me financially. And then where I was staying with them. They will cook food. They are about, of course, all of them work for my uncle. So in the evening, they will cook food. And they will gather. They say, all of us should come and eat. And they will sit. They will be chatting. They will be eating. I looked at my life. I was hungry. I have not eaten all day. The only thing I have had was swan water in my stomach. And they said to me, come and eat. And I imagine, how will I end if I sit together with them, sharing from the same bowl? The food was good. The food was enough. There was no doubt about it. But the company of the eaters, I don't want to be like that. The company of the eaters, I didn't want to be like that. What are you talking about? I just came back from UK, school there. I did textile technology. 
And now I am reduced because of temporary circumstances. I am reduced to a seat. Praise the Lord. They will say, come and eat now. I said, no, I'm not hungry. But I was starving. I was starving. I will read my book and I will drink my water. It went on for days. I've never forgotten that December. Because that December, I didn't have food to eat. I didn't have food to eat. And yet, if I had traveled just five hours to the to Abba, my family is there. My family is in Lagos. I will find food. But shame on those that travel for food. Did you hear what I said? Shame on those. Today, where are those that were eaten on the ground? No. Today, where are those that are eaten on the ground? All of them, those that are still alive, they are still on the ground. All those that ate on that ground like this, some of them have died. But many of them are still grounded. Do you understand what I'm talking about? No. Do you, do you get what I'm talking about? If you are in God's family church, you cannot be a beggar. You cannot be a victim. Amen. This calling, he said we are made not only in his image but in his likeness. Carry yourself like the child of God. No, carry yourself. Whose image is your life representing? Carry yourself. Somebody said, he said, ah, my wife cannot insult you. I said, she would never have a reason to insult me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Never, never. Nobody will have a reason to insult me. For what? I am a carrier of glory. You insult me, the Holy Ghost will assault you. You insult me, I go inside and report you to headquarters. I don't need to talk back to you. That's the mistake one of you. You insult me, you start talking like a nobody. No, insult me, I'll bow my knees. When I bow my knees, I said, Lord, this one needs to be visited. This one needs to be dealt with. And by the time the Lord is done with you, you will come and apologize. Are you hearing me? You will not have that privilege to insult. And you shouldn't have it to insult any man of God. Because the God we serve, elders of one church, gathered together. They said the pastor insulted them. The, the, the message of the pastor insulted them. They carried the pastor. They put the pastor down. They took Cain and Cain the pastor. They came their pastor. The pastor. <laughs> they said next time you learn to respect elders when you are preaching. The pastor left like this. <laughs> the God of that pastor got angry. All the elders in that church that did it, God began to kill their first son. Bah! The first one was dead in the first month. Bah! The second month, the second one was dead. Their firstborn was dying. The God that dealt with Pharaoh is still God. What are you talking about? Because you have few change, you come and insult the man of God. The man doesn't know his God. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. We carry grace. We carry glory. We carry a presence. We may not appear to you like that until when you cross our path, you will see what happens. Praise the Lord. Make next week count in your life. Make next week to be different. 2025. At the end of the day, what will happen and what will not happen in 2025 will all be controlled and programmed in next week in that three days of praying and fasting. Praise the Lord. Jacob refused to let go. Jacob was left alone. Jacob prepared a gift. If you do the same thing, 
your 2025 will be glorious. Stand on your feet. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah.